When I was a student, in fact, when I was a sixth form schoolboy, when I was 16, 17, I used to take the Architecture Review magazine. And in that magazine, of course, I saw the work of Norman Foster long before I ever met him. But then I started to work after university, after I traveled a lot, I came back and my first job was as a young assistant editor of the Architecture Review magazine, which is a magazine I loved and knew well. But luckily, they gave me a job. And then, soon afterwards, I went to Great Portland Street, the office of Foster Associates then in London, and I met Norman Foster and his team, and we've kept in touch ever since. What I remember about meeting Norman Foster for the first time is his energy and the fact he made everything exciting. But when I met Norman, I thought, that's what I think an architect should be like. Really energetic, a ball of energy, very exciting. The Sainsbury Centre did something very important at the time. It was built in the 1970s when most of the European economy was in recession. It was a pretty grim time economically and architecture, particularly in Britain, I think had got stuck in a bit of a rut. The Sainsbury Centre, boy, you went to see this building and there it was as if it had landed from the sky very gently on this beautiful green lawn and it sat there like in a way like an aircraft gently soft quiet and it was a very elegant building that was unlike anything else you could say and people did say good lord it's like um an aircraft hangar well yes exactly it was like an aircraft hangar a very superior a very high quality aircraft hangar that was also an art gallery and a teaching centre. There was a possibility that a new architecture could be something else other than big clumps of brick. I think the second time I met Norman Foster in Great Portland Street, I also met Buckminster Fuller. Now that was really exciting. I knew exactly who he was. I had read his writings I, and I knew that he was a fascinating person, a little bit eccentric perhaps, creative, dynamic, and what a thrill it was to meet him. And of course I knew about his Damaxian car, I'd been interested in cars and technology since a very young child. And to sit with this man and to see how he interacted with Foster was very, very exciting. They were like, to me in a sense, they were like two boys together in the best way. So Foster and Fuller were a very good partnership in every way, intellectually, creatively, artistically, um, socially, philosophically. And the reason is this, it's the both liked the idea of machines and buildings that would touch the ground very lightly. They liked the idea of aircraft and space and movement. They liked the idea of people being able to move quickly and elegantly around the earth. And so when the opportunity came to write a book about the Dymaxian car that Norman was then building, it was just a perfect match. So my memory was all there. I met Buckminster. Um, talked to Norman of course over the years and then I loved the whole concept of this very strange car that might have come from the planet Zarg or something in the outer space or certainly from Mars and here it was being built. I went to talk to him at his house in Switzerland and we were talking about a particular project we'd like to do about aircraft and architecture, aviation and architecture. We spent our time looking at birds because we both like flight, we both like birds and Norman's enthusiasm for birds is great. You know, so we watched birds fly over the fountains and the lake and we spent a happy hour talking about nothing else but birds. Now that shows a lively, inquiring and young mind at work. That what's reflected in the architecture is that sense of excitement, um, of, of lifting up, of lightness, of looking always forward and up and not down and backwards.